All right, I know it's been a little bit of time in between my last update on this LED display and this current one. I apologize for that, but I mentioned before that sometimes I get distracted by other projects and that certainly was the case. So where I left off last time is I pretty much had the electronics part of this project done. I need to do some more on the programming part and get some things worked out there, but I moved on to making the case for the cabinet for my um, matrices. So I had some leftover maple from another project and I created this case. I have a mitered frame that's going to go around the matrices. On the back side then I have in essence a box. That box will contain obviously the back side of those matrices, the battery pack, so if I want to power this um, independent of an AC adapter I can. I have my electronics in here, some push buttons, power switches, those kinds of items, and then a power adapter. So if I do want to run it off of a wall wart power adapter, I can. There's a recess along the outer edge here. That's going to be for a piece of aluminum for my, my back plate, and that's also what I'll use to mount some of my push button switches I'm going to use to go into different modes and configure my matrices. If you can see here, and I'll try to zoom in a little bit better so you can, I created this so that my matrices come in through an opening on the one side. They go into this groove, and then they drop down into a smaller groove that then rides along its entire length. So I can put in a matrix, drop it in, slide it over, repeat that, for the first three. The last one then will simply sit there, but I don't want it to wobble. So I use these latches. These are the kind that you would typically use in woodworking for holding in a raised panel or a glass panel or a mirror. And they're screwed in there and then they'll simply turn or pivot to hold that final matrix in place. So let me go ahead and I'll show you how that, that works. It's a little snug in this section here. I had to do a little bit of work to uh, make it slide a little bit, and I still got a little bit more to do, so it's a little bit snug, so I'm going to have to pull this out of the picture a little bit, uh, put it against my body to, in order to slide it in the rest of the way. But I'll show you how it works in this spot, and then I'll go ahead and move it in. So, take my matrix, slide it in from the one end, it drops down in place, then it starts to slide into that groove. And here's where it gets a little bit tight. So I'm going to just go ahead and move it the rest of the way. So now it's slid all the way down to the other end. When it's in place, now I have a flush design. My other three then will simply go in here all the way to the other end, right up and flush to this very end here. Then I'll lock it in place. My plan is to apply a stain over the outer frame portion. The rest of the box then, the outside, I'm going to spray paint black. I'm going to see how that looks, how that works. It'll depend on my color of stain I think I use here. But if it doesn't work out, I don't like the stain, I'm simply going to paint everything black and I think that'll work. I don't want too much contrast between my frame and my, my matrix. And so I think if it were black, and then I've got the black field area of the matrix and the black frame, I think that would look fine. So a dark stain may also achieve the same result. So we'll, we'll take a look and we'll see there. Let me give you a little bit closer up detail of how I created this. So here is a scrap of the outer frame that I mitered. So you can see there, there's that, that groove this in the frame. Here we go. So there's that groove that I was talking about and that's what holds then that matrix in place and allows it to slide back and forth. The sides then simply are flat, flat bottom. And so that overlaps that groove that I made. It's glued on and so it sandwiches that in, in place. And then I had to create that larger groove on the one end, allow the matrix to drop in place into that groove. So it's a relatively simple design. I think it's going to work out quite well. It has uh, worked out quite well so far. I had to do a little bit of fine tuning, as I mentioned. 
have the sand to groove a little bit in the middle because it was a little bit snug. Also, it's a little bit uh, too tight uh, on here. So I took a little bit of abrasive paper and sanded the edges of my uh, matrix. Not a big deal, there's no circuitry that's there. I tend to make things too exact. I've done machining before and CNC work and, you know, <laughs> used to working to thousands of an inch and sometimes I get carried away in the woodworking part of it and make things too precise. And I think I did that a little bit. I had some variance in there and that little bit of variance with my tolerances that I was keeping was, was causing me to be a little bit of a pain there in that middle and I had to increase the, the groove width. Uh, so, you know, again, I think it's going to work out quite well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stained, get this painted. I'll keep you up to date as to how that works and hopefully not let as much time pass in between my updates on this project. Uh, we're certainly getting close here to getting this wrapped up. Uh, thank you for watching and appreciate it if you subscribe.